Hello and welcome to Craft D&D, where today we're going to make some rowboats. To make our rowboats, we're going to need some popsicle sticks, a bit of water in a dish, the back of a cereal box, glue and the regular paints, you know, the, the regular tools that you would normally need. First, I start by soaking some popsicle sticks in some water. I do this overnight, and this is necessary in order to be able to bend the popsicle sticks without them breaking. I recommend at least overnight, and a couple of days doesn't really hurt. The more flexible they are, the easier they're going to be to work with. Then I also take some other popsicle sticks, four other popsicle sticks, cut them each about four inches long. It doesn't really matter as long as they're you know, all the same length, that's the critical thing, and that they're about that four inches long. So after they're cut, I go ahead and just glue them down to the piece of a cereal box, as you can see there. It's just something bigger than the popsicle sticks themselves. It's just easier than trying to glue them all end to end. Uh, when you glue them, you will want to get them end to end. But it's just so much simpler just to glue them onto the back of a piece of cardboard like that. Although the other way does work too. I've made several boats the other way as well. So once your sticks are all nicely soaked and you can bend them easily without them breaking, you need to actually bend them all at the same time together so that you can get them all with a nice same curve in them. Then you just need to find something that you can kind of push them into and bend them around. In my case, I'm using my scissors because both handles are nice and big and a pair of scissors works pretty well for this. Although whatever you have that will do the same function will work just as fine. And then really the only thing to do after this is just let them dry. You want it to completely dry, so overnight at least, a couple of days is fine. Just make sure that wood is completely dry, so you might want to use a scissors or other tool that you don't normally use. That way you don't put your main tool out of commission. As you can see here, the sticks are dry and ready to be removed from the scissors. It's just a simple matter of opening up the scissors and letting the wood pop out. The next thing I want to do is cut the little tips off, those rounded tips off of each of my dried pieces. I could have done this before I soaked them. I waited till after. It doesn't really matter which. I just put it up against a straight edge. In this case, I have a little tiny square that I picked up at a, a hardware store for a couple dollars. So just put it up against there, draw a line, and then I'm going to use my pliers, my wire cutters there to kind of snip that off. Uh, you could use a pair of scissors to snip that off. I prefer the wire cutters just because it leaves a nice clean line and it really makes a nice, a nice cut. So the next thing I'm going to do is figure out where the front of the boat should be and, and where my cut should be there. So I go ahead and put my two cut pieces lined up onto the back of the boat. And then I can go ahead and use that and kind of figure out where the front of the boat should be. Once I have that found, I go ahead and mark that front tip. And then I'll go ahead and cut that off. And then I'll just actually use that piece to go ahead and measure the second piece just by laying it on top of the second piece, marking it, and cutting it off as well. Now don't be afraid to make a little bit smaller cut that you think you might need. Uh, make that cut put the pieces onto the boat, kind of line it up there to that center line, take them off, trim it up as you need to. Something I like to do too is kind of smooth that sharp edge so it's not a flat edge anymore, but more of an angled edge in. That way the two, two uh, pieces come together at a point that they're actually coming together as one smooth point and not two uh, chunks or two angled edges coming out together. So that just makes it a nice, better aesthetic look. Although either way, it's fine. Obviously, you're not going to take this for sailing for real. Uh, but you put a little bit of extra time there, and it actually will make it look a lot nicer at that point. Once you get everything trimmed up how you like it, and it looks like it's fitting nicely, we're just setting it there. Now it's time to go ahead and glue it into place. Now you could use a uh, hot glue, you could use PVA glue. I kind of like PVA glue for this step. Uh, there is a drying time, obviously. But the nice thing about it is you can adjust it around. Because for myself, I inevitably will put that glue on there. And then I'll put the piece into place. 
and it won't be quite right. And if it's hot glue, I have to like try to pick it off. And or if it's PVA glue, I can just kind of move it around until I get it however I want it. So personal preference, I prefer PVA glue, but uh, you go ahead and use whatever you like. And here I'm just putting a little piece of black tape on there temporarily until the glue dries. And that's just to keep it from popping apart or coming apart. And I also ended up adding a little clamp just for the same purpose so it doesn't come apart while it's drying. And this is just a simple clamp you could buy at a hardware store. As you can see, I added a couple of the popsicle sticks and put it on. So pretty simple. And so once that's dry, I'm ready to go ahead and add the back of the boat. Just take another popsicle stick and kind of line it up. I've cut off one end already just to give it a smooth edge. Line it up to the back of the boat, uh, fitting it inside the boat, not outside the boat. Um, because otherwise you have kind of a weird ridge or the popsicle stick isn't tall enough because it's sitting up on the other popsicle sticks. Um, and I just simply uh, draw the lines where I need them and use my pliers, my wire cutters, and cut them off. So after a couple of test fits and make any adjustments, any trimming you might have to do, and then just add the glue and put the backing in there. And then once again, I had to use my clamp to clamp that back into place and let it dry again. If I'd have had a couple of clamps, and I would actually I should pick up a second clamp, then I could have actually have clamped both pieces at the same time and then only had one drying step. So I really should get a second clamp for that. While that's drying, it's a great time to get the seats ready to go and put into place. Now, I just simply cut two popsicle sticks or two chunks of a popsicle stick to fit and just put them all the way down on the bottom. I don't like put them up. They're not raised up at all. I'll actually do that with some paint, make it look like it's up higher than it is. Uh, but the popsicle sticks themselves just lay it completely on the bottom all the way across and actually help provide a little bit of extra strength and support uh, because of the, that piece of wood is glued um, in the other direction from the floor pieces. So as you can see here, I already have that back seat uh, already cut and glued into place. So that's all ready to go. Now I just need to work on the front seat. And I do like to put that a little bit further ahead up into where the angles are already going. Um, it just is a little bit nicer look up there. You do have to make sure you get your lines drawn in the right spots and then kind of cut at an angle. Uh, with this tiny uh, popsicle stick, you don't have to like follow an exact angle as long as you don't put it right where your bend is. So it actually works out pretty nicely. Now here I'm just showing off a couple of other boats that I've already made. Never mind the paint job. They're kind of, I could have been definitely painted a little bit nicer, a little bit slower. But uh, as you can see here with this boat here, it's uh, dried, it's ready to go. So that's what we're going to work on next is taking it off the clamp and getting it the base all formed. Simple step first, just cut off all the excess cardboard. Next you need to decide if you want to take the excess base off or if you just want to leave it on you could just leave it on and paint it blue now for all of my boats i actually go ahead and cut them all off but you absolutely could uh, go ahead and leave it blue and i've thought about doing that but i just think it looks nicer to cut them off but that's once again totally up to you just go ahead and paint it blue and you have water so to cut it off just take your scissors and open that scissors up wide and get that piece of Popsicle stick way up tight into the bite, close to the pivot as you can, and start to cut down a little bit. Open it back up, push it forward, you know, try to cut with way back towards the pivot. That's the easiest way to cut. For whatever reason, it's easier for me to cut one side than it is the other, and I inevitably end up trimming up the other side um, a lot more than I do the uh, right handed side. The left handed side for me, for whatever reason, is just harder to get off. But you just have to work at it. Uh, try not to take too big of chunks if you are, aren't sure. Make smaller cuts and uh, you can get it off. When I was taking it off, I ended up pulling the tip away. It wasn't quite dry or something, or I didn't have enough glue up there. So I just went ahead and grabbed my hot glue gun to kind of do some little quick repairs there to the tip. Um, I could have re-glued it with PVA and reclamped it, but... Like I said before, totally optional if you want to use the hot, or the hot glue or the PVA glue. And sometimes I mix and match. 
And then finally, we're on to painting. Um, for painting, I usually use black or white to kind of base everything. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use black. A lot of my boats have been white, uh, just because I want a more bright color. And this one, I thought, no, I can go with a more black color, just to have something different in my boat collection. Because I do have, I don't know, half a dozen of these. So a nice black one does sound like it'd be a fun little change for me, but do whichever one you want. Uh, for paint, I just use the basic cheap big bottle of paint from the big box store. Um, you can buy it in black and white, and I have one of each. And then for like the highlight or accent colors, that's when I'll go ahead and pull out a little bit smaller bottle and uh, use that. Uh, for these type of stuff, you don't have to go out and buy expensive paints. Just your basic cheap stuff that you buy in the craft section of your, your big box store is great, even for the colored paints. It all works pretty good. And as far as if you're putting it on a gaming table, it's going to be handled, going to have minis put into it, maybe crashed together. It's just, you know, you don't have to go out and buy anything expensive. Give it some depth. I will take a, a, some white or some other, like, bright color and paint the very upper tip or the upper edge of the boat. And then paint the seats of the boat. And that always gives it a nice little depth. Um, sometimes I'll go ahead and, like, paint the floor of the boat with a clear nail polish to make it look, look like there's water down there. Maybe the boat's a little bit leaky or something like that. Uh, some of the boats have went ahead and added some other colors into them to make it look like they're a little bit more beaten up or a little bit older or something like that. But your basic paint job to make sure you get that depth and those highlights, just go ahead and make sure the two places I always hit are the seats and then the very top edge of the boat. And because you are painting white onto this black, you might have to give it longer dry times between and do a couple of more coats of the white just to make it stand out from the black. Otherwise, the black does kind of bleed through a little bit. Uh, that kind of, It's kind of true for any of the colors. You definitely want to give it some dry time between colors. And then finally, we want to make some paddles for our boat with a rowboat. What would a rowboat be without paddles? I just grab a popsicle stick, um, snip the edges or the ends off uh, about half an inch or somewhere between quarter and half an inch. Try to make them both the same. And then I just glue each of those to a matchstick, a small matchstick. You could spend some time and round the matchstick, kind of sit and carve on it, or just leave it, you know, matchstick shaped. It doesn't really matter. Uh, PVA glue, hot glue, whichever one you want to use. And then when everything's all dried, ready to go, I just go ahead and paint them, uh, sometimes in matching colors to the boats, uh, usually, uh, or sometimes I just paint them in uh, contrasting colors to the boats. Uh, either way, whichever one looks better to you. And then finally, let everything dry and you're ready to use it on the gaming table. Uh, as you can see here, I just went ahead and painted my oars white. Uh, it could have went with some black or something like that. I just went ahead with, with some white. I can easily fit three minis in there. If I had some smaller luggage type things I could put towards the front or maybe a couple of minis in a treasure chest, you know, kind of whatever that you want, kind of um, whatever is relevant to the gameplay. I mean, it, it, they are usable. You can sit, fit minis in them. You can steer them around. They do fit on the, on the battle maps and they work really well. So thank you for watching. Once again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon.